Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Farming Simulator 25 tips and tricks video. Today, we're going to be talking about all things Water Buffalo. Water Buffalo was introduced to the Farming Simulator franchise in the release of FS25. And for the most part, we can consider Water Buffalo to be kind of a variant of cattle. They are going to have, for the most part, the general same requirements. And in fact, we're going to make use of the same pins in order to keep them. Let's jump into build mode and take a look at those very animal pins. Go into build mode, we're going to come over to animals and then cows. And from here, we have six different options as far as a pen. We have the open cow pasture, which is going to be able to support seven cows or water buffalo in its default configuration. Now, do note, the first three buildings that we're going to show off here, they do have some level of limitation. They are not going to be able to produce slurry. They are not, to the best of my ability, able to produce manure. More on that in a little bit. And they are not going to produce milk. If you wish to have water buffalo milk, then you definitely need to use a pasture or a pen other than the first three that we're about to look at. The second barn is going to be the cow barn right there. It's going to hold 35 cows or water buffalo in its standard configuration. And then we have a large cow barn located right here. And it's going to be able to hold 99 cows in its standard configuration or water buffalo. And again, none of these three buildings are capable of outputting milk. Their ability to output manure is somewhat suspect. I have tested and I was not able to get manure out of this building or this building but in subsequent tests I also ran into an issue where I couldn't get manure out of this building in one save versus I was able to in another so I've got half a mind to think it may have an issue if we have multiple manure heaps I need to do a little bit more testing but if I do find that out then I will be submitting a bug to Giants our third or should I say our fourth building option is going to be the cow barn, one of the buildings from FS25 for $254,000. In its default configuration, it's going to hold 50 cows. This one will produce manure. This one will produce slurry. And we can also get milk out of here. We then have our large cow barn. Again, a building that we are used to seeing from FS22. It can buy it for $518,500. And is going to hold 96 cows. This one also will produce milk, slurry, and if you have the right manure heap next to it, manure, in theory. And then we have our final building, which is going to be the large cow barn with feeding robot. I'm going to place it down here just to demonstrate the dynamic pastures feature of the game. Once we place our building, we're then going to be asked, do we want to customize the fence? Sure. Yes, I do. And from this point, I am now able to place a fence down. Just real quick, we're going to kind of border this field. With our fence. And of course, we can take greater care with respect to this if we wanted to. It's important though that when we close our fence off, it snap to the building. If it doesn't snap to the building, then you need to try to reposition your fence. And left click. Do we want to add meadow? Yes, we want to add meadow grass. And now our pasture is complete. And if we jump over here to this area, We're going to see now that we're going to be able to provide a lot more cows to this building. 207 or 237 to be exact. This building is very similar to the large cow barn. Other than the fact that it has a feeding robot. And that feeding robot is going to have areas here for you to dump loose straw in the middle pin. Hay and silage. And then we're going to be able to place pallets of mineral feed around the side we can also provide bales here as well 
but we want to make sure that we place those well outside of this shed in order for the bell trigger to pick them up. The feeding robot will then run at the top of each hour. It will scoop one of each of these inputs into a little feeding robot here, which will then make its way around and into and out of the building to feed on a regular basis. We have our slurry point here. And I have to say the dynamic pastures feature really is, in my opinion, going to further enhance the game because it's going to allow players to fully customize their animal pins and fully customize their farms much, much more rich than we could in the past. Let's make our way back over here to our cow barn. And from here, let's talk about buying our cows. So we have two ways to buy our cows. We can buy our cows at the pin or we can buy them at the animal dealer. If we buy them here at the pin, well, we are gonna have to pay a transport fee. For our water buffalo calves, we're gonna have to pay a fee of $50. For our juveniles, we're gonna have to pay a fee of $65. And for our fully grown water buffalo, we're gonna have to pay a fee of $100 per buffalo to transport them. If we do it from the animal dealer though, we do not have any transportation fees. On River Vent Springs, we're gonna find the animal dealer here in town, right across the street from the shop and gas station. And then as a reference, this is where our starting farm is located on River Vent Springs. If you're doing this on another map, well, the animal dealer could be just about anywhere, but do note that Kate is gonna be here in order to provide you helpful information with respect to how to care for your water buffalo if this video doesn't suffice. In order to transport your water buffalo from the animal dealer, you're gonna need the Flegel TTW 140 or the Wilson Star trailer. We're gonna find those under vehicles and we're gonna scroll down to animals. And then we have a subcategory under that called animal transport. The first trailer here is gonna be exclusive to horses. We need to go to the Flegel NOAA TTW 140, and it's gonna be able to transport six buffalo or cows. And then our Silver Star is gonna be able to transport 12 buffalo or cows at one time. If you do go with the Silver Star, you'll either need a semi truck or you're gonna need a dolly with fifth wheel attachment in order to use it with a tractor. Once we are positioned in our trigger, we're gonna come over here to our tractor. We're gonna hit R and we're gonna get the loading animal screen. We can load onto our trailer, total of six animals. We can buy juveniles or newborn buffalo, zero months old for a total of $200. We can buy juvenile buffalo, which are five months old. Strike that, six months old for $525. And we can buy adult buffalo, which are 18 months old for $1,175. And again, if we buy them here at the animal dealer, there is no additional fee. Other information about water buffalo that is important. Our juveniles will be able to start reproducing and making milk once they reach an age of 18 months. And once they do reach an age of 18 months, our water buffalo will reproduce every 10 months thereafter and it is gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio. So each water buffalo will produce one offspring every 10 months after it has reached an age of 18 months. Back here at the farm, let's talk about feeding our water buffalo in the various pens. Most specifically, the open pasture that we have here because this pasture splits out loose and bale triggers. So if we are delivering loose material, maybe it's TMR mixed up in a TMR wagon, maybe it's just loose hay or grass or silage, then we're gonna be able to bring it here and dump it on the ground. It is then gonna be picked up and put into the food trough. If by other chance we are deciding to feed bales to this animal pen, we're gonna to have to put it actually inside this bale hopper. And this is where the bale trigger is going to be located. Meanwhile, this is where our loose material is going to be able to be dumped. This pin also is going to require water. All of the other pins, which are buildings, 
we're going to pretend have water piped into them and therefore we're not going to require any water to be brought all the other pins are going to have a combined bale and loose trigger so we're going to be able to feed animals at any of these other pins by coming up to this icon here and either placing a bale on the ground or unloading a trailer in my testing i had put hay in here as well as straw and then i had fast forwarded a few nights to see if i would get manure i did not get manure to spawn nor did i get any actual straw to be consumed i initially thought well maybe that is because these two new buildings aren't set up to produce manure because i was able to get manure in that manure heap off in the distance but i wasn't able to get manure in the building that was associated with this building here in subsequent tests i should say that manure heap back there failed to produce manure what was different well that is a manure heap extension i had placed over here initially a manure heap this did not produce manure that did so i deleted the manure heap and i put a manure heap extension down here at that point that manure heap failed to produce any more manure and nothing spawned here either i've kind of sensed that there may be a bug in version 1.2.1 of the game which is what we are using right now that is causing multiple manure heaps to not have any manure spawn in them as a result now i've talked about manure heap and manure heap extensions they are two different things we're going to find both of them here under our sheds category under silos we're going to find our manure heap in theory this is where we're going to be able to store manure if we placed one of these down we could bring manure dump it in here and it would store up to four million liters under silo extensions we have our manure heap extension this is in theory the building that you place next to an animal pasture that can make manure in order to have manure spawn assuming that you're also using straw this does have to be within a specific range of the appropriate animal building in order for it to be properly recognized and once it is within range you'll basically see that message go away Hopefully you'll have a price indicator. You can put it down and it's good to go. This manure heap is going to rotate every 90 degrees because it is a building that has a heap spawn point. And those types of buildings, typically you can only rotate on the 90 degree axis. So that is what I'm meaning when I say manure heap and manure heap extension. Your mileage may vary and I would be very interested to know if you're running into the same general issue. Now, let's talk about feeding our cows a little bit. So in this building, I have fed 100% all the way maxed out my hay. If I want to come and feed total mixed rations now to these 30 buffalo, I will not be successful in doing so because the total capacity of the food has been filled with hay. The only way I'm going to be able to add more food to this pasture is to wait for the buffalo to consume this hay down to some degree. Then I can put more food in here, let's say total mixed rations, but only up to the point that then the total capacity has been reached. So for animals that have multiple food capacities or multiple food requirements, be very cautious with how much you feed of any one food source. Because once the total capacity has been reached, you will not be able to add any more food. For our water buffalo, we have several different food sources to pick from. We have meadow grass. Water buffalo are a grazing animal. So they will be able to consume the grass that is grazing within their pasture area. So that is what this indicator is. Although meadow grass is only going to provide them with 40% of their total effectiveness which means that their productivity and their health will suffer as a result of only being able to eat meadow grass. We could also bring 
just regular grass to them in the form of being loose material from a forage wagon or baled material as form of a round or square bale. That again is only going to be able to provide them 40% effectiveness. We could bring them silage in the form of either a silage bale or silage we have compacted and fermented. That's going to provide us with 80% effectiveness. We could bring them hay. Hay is going to provide them 80% effectiveness. The only thing that's going to provide them 100% effectiveness is going to be total mixed rations. Unlike pigs, which are parallel eaters, which means that they will eat from all of their food sources at once, water buffalo are cereal eaters. And what I mean by cereal eaters, I mean they will only eat one food source at a time until that food source has been completely eliminated. Then they will feed from another food source. And they always feed from the best food source possible. So if you feed only hay in here, okay, then they're going to eat only hay. They will not consume any meadow grass as long as there is hay in the feed trough. If you feed total mixed rations and hay, for example, then they will consume the total mixed rations first, and then they will consume the hay second. And then when both of those are consumed, if there is meadow grass, then they will consume the meadow grass. So I've mentioned total mixed rations. What is it and how do you make it? Well, that is somewhat a topic for another video because it can get a little bit long in the tooth. But in general, total mixed rations is going to be a mixture of at least two different food sources. And that is going to be either hay or silage. So at the heart of it, you either mix 50-50 hay and silage to get total mixed rations, or you can provide a little bit of straw to the mix to kind of make everything stretch out. And that is going to make total mixed rations. Or you can provide also some mineral feed and you're going to get your total mixed rations. So there's several ways to make TMR. And in the end, TMR made with mineral feed is TMR. TMR made without mineral feed is TMR. TMR made without straw is still TMR. It's all the same regardless of what you use to make it. You're going to need a forage wagon, or not a forage wagon, a forage mixing wagon like we have here in order to mix up your TMR. You're going to find that under vehicles and then under animals we have the forage mixers category there are three trailed tmr mixers and then if you want to and you have the money well you can upgrade to a really cool and interesting self-propelled version the self-propelled version is going to have the ability to directly intake silage from a silage bunker or hay and straw directly from a pile on the ground Now let's bring our TMR over here to our large cow barn. And we'll put it down inside here. We do have the ability to change our unload. Right now it's set to tip side left. You. We're going to change to tip side right. I don't load. And we are now adding TMR into this building. If we come here and make a look at our large cow barn. You see we are adding total mixed rations to this barn. So we already had some TMR in here. And we also have 8,000 liters worth of straw. Let's talk about the other things that you may need in order to care for your water buffalo. Well, if you're going to go for manure, you're going to definitely need a straw blower. 
none of the base game water buffalo and cow buildings are going to offer the ability to take a straw bale i have here the savage bale shredder or bale blower and we're going to find that here under again animals straw blowers we have the ravage or the primor 15070m both of those are going to accept bales and are going to basically shred them apart the way we can use the rexor or the ravage here is we can unfold it and then at that point we can use the left mouse button up and down to move the forks up we'll put the forks down down we'll move the forks up and we're going to dump that bale into our piece of machinery we're going to hit x then to fold our hinds back up and we're going to bring this straw bale over to our large cow barn once again and then place it into the building So we have two different ways we can unload. We can unload that way, or we can switch over to hip side straw blower. And now we can basically blow our straw out. And as we are adding straw, we will see the straw trigger or the straw plane start to rise up above the concrete there in the building. And again, we could come here and we could see our straw levels going up. Now do note, all of our animals currently show a productivity of zero, a health of zero. That is because that we do not have any meadow grass at this point, and it is still August. So we need to basically sleep one night in order then for our productivity and our health to rise. Other vehicles and machines that you may need for your cows. Well, we're going to possibly also need to make use of a front loader. And here I have a self-propelled front loader in the Schaefer. But you can also use front loader arms and a tractor. You can use a telehandler or a skid steer. But basically what we're looking at is we need something that is going to allow us to handle bales and pallets. We need bales because, well, we're either going to be using bales or loose material for our TMR mixer and for our straw blower. And we're going to need pallets possibly for handling our mineral feed. In addition, you might want a truck like this International CV series. This is going to be used to possibly transport your mineral feed to and from the shop or to transport your bales from the field to the farm or from the farm to your animal pasture. If you have the open pasture, you're going to need a water barrel in order to water your cows. You're going to find that here under vehicles and then under barrels. We have four different options for water transport. We are making use of the 1600 here in this video. You may also want a trailer for the process of transporting bulk goods. We could put a building down. Let's get into build mode. We could put a silo down that we're going to call a hayloft and that hayloft is going to be here and it's going to be used for storing loose hay and straw we're going to be able to dump loose hay and straw into here and we're going to be able to get loose hay and straw out of the center area here the big downside is that building is only going to be able to support 250,000 liters if we like to handle bales well, we have the option of storing our bales in a bale and pallet storage building that is going to be located right here. And that is going to be able to store a total of 250 bales or pallets. As far as handling our cow outputs, where our cows are going to output milk, we're going to need a liquid tanker to transport our milk. And under the same categories of animals and barrels, 
we're gonna find the MK8 and the MKS32. Both of these are gonna be able to capable of transporting not only water, but also cow milk and buffalo milk as well. In addition, if you are going to be using slurry to use it as a fertilizer, then you're gonna to want to have a slurry applicator. Here we have a FarmTech Super Cease 800. We're gonna find that here under vehicles and then we're gonna scroll up to yield improvements and we have our slurry tankers. This is the one that we have here on this particular video. Some of these slurry tankers will also require the use of an applicator. So in this case, we have the large slurry tank, but we have no way of actually applying it to the ground. In order to do that, we're gonna use the combinations feature. And this is gonna show us the compatible applicators that we can get for this particular slurry tanker. Some of these applicators will use a drop line to apply slurry on top of the ground. Meanwhile, other applicators may use more of a disc based application in order to put the product actually in to the ground. If you provide your cows straw, then you may get manure out if you also place a manure heap extension. And by doing so, you're gonna need a manure spreader in order to apply that to your field. So we can find that once again under vehicles and yield improvements. We have a manure spreaders category where we have five different manure spreaders, which are included in the base game. They all work pretty much the same principle. You load manure through the top and manure gets sprayed out the back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward one night and we're gonna see where we stand with respect to our water buffalo health. And if we actually have any manure spawn in that manure heap extension. All right, we move forward one month, and lo and behold, we don't have any manure in our heap. Again, I think this might be some sort of bug. I'm going to report it and see what gets corrected. But at any rate, we are using version 1.2.1. If you're having issues with manure heaps, do note you're not going to be the only one here. I'm going to put down a manure heap extension. Delete the old. Put down another one. And we're going to fast forward another night here in a little bit and see if we finally get manure after we put another one down. With respect to our bale storage, right? We can put bales in and we can get bales out. Total capacity of 250 bales. If you are, once again, playing version 1.2.1, there is a known bug with our bale storage building, where if you try to get bales out of the building, it will basically put them here on the input and just spawn them right back in. Pretty frustrating, right? Give me your bales. No. Give me your bales. No. Give me your bales. No. All right. At any rate, there is a quick fix to that. That's just put something here. Place a tractor here. Place a truck here. And that will then force the bales to spawn in front of the trigger. And that will get the job done. Until the game is updated. If you're watching this video sometime after its release then it's quite possible that it's already been fixed and you won't run into that issue. Let's take a look at our animal food now and see how we stand with respect to productivity. Here we are with our big cow pen. This is one that we added TMR to. You see we now have meadow grass, but the meadow grass is completely full. That is because, well, we have TMR. And as I mentioned earlier, cows are cereal eaters, which means they will eat the best food first. Then they will eat the next best food to the next best food. So if you have TMR, hay, and meadow grass, it, when the TMR runs out, they will eat the hay. When the hay runs out, they will eat the meadow grass if it is still available. As you can see, since we have food in here, we also have straw in here. We are 100% productive, 100% health. We are moving our reproductive gauge. If we're not healthy, then we're not going to be able to reproduce. And we are generating buffalo milk. We're also generating slurry. And if we didn't have that issue, we would also be generating manure. Let's take a look at a couple of our other animal areas that have some cows in them. Here we have our large barn, again, that does not produce milk. You see that they have fed down a little bit of the hay. They've not consumed any of the meadow grass and our total food capacity has gone down a very, very small amount. 
if we wanted to come in here and feed TMR, let's say at this point, we would only be able to apply a very small amount until this was completely full. So again, be cautious if you plan to upgrade your food to a higher level to not have a whole lot of food in the trough. When you do so, you're going to have to let it consume down a bit before you can start adding it. Otherwise, they're only going to be able to eat a little bit of your max food. And then they're going to jump down to the lesser quality food. And as you can see, as a result, our productivity and our health is suffering because they're only eating 80% effective feed. Let's jump one more month ahead and just see, just as a test, if we get any manure. Yay, congratulations. We are now producing manure. So I think there's a bug um, with respect to manure heaps, and hopefully it's not related to saving the game, exiting, and coming back in. Because let me, let me just describe how I set this up. I have a testing save, and the testing save has this farm set up the way I want it with respect to these three fields as all in gravel. And I load the testing save up. I set up the video the way I want it to be set up, and then I save that. You know, I have a backup of my initial testing save, okay? Then I run through things. I make sure I got a good flow for the video. I make sure things in theory work. And then I quit the game and I load up the testing save back to the point where I would be starting the video. Pretty nice process. This worked the first time I ran through it and I got manure. The second time I ran through it when I was recording a version of this video, which I have subsequently deleted, manure didn't spawn here. And I ran through several different iterations, fast forward a bunch of times, and finally got it to spawn. I trashed all of that, and now we're recording this a second time. As you have seen in this video, and we're going to keep this copy, manure didn't spawn there initially. I'm not trying to hide bugs. I'm just would like the video to run smooth, if possible. There may be a bug in 1.2.1. Maybe it'll be resolved. Keep a lookout for updates. Keep a lookout and read through the change log to see if there's something with respect to buggy manure production with respect to buffalo or maybe the manure heaps in general. Now that we have manure, now that we have milk and slurry, well, we can talk more about our outputs. We're going to be able to bring our milk to a dairy. And I, here I have two production dairies that we can place in the game. On Rivervent Springs, we have a dairy that is a cell point as well. That is going to be located over here in town, and we are right there. That particular dairy is only a cell point. If we take a look at our buffalo milk, you see we have 1,223 liters of buffalo milk at this point. We can sell the buffalo milk at the dairy. We have a low price on easy economy of $9,450 or a high price on average of $11,340 per thousand liters. Or we could bring our buffalo milk to the buffalo milk bottling agency, aka a production dairy, and we could bottle it and we could then sell our bottled buffalo milk at the farmer's market. Goldcrest Valley, which is a train cell point, the restaurant, the small farmer's kiosk, which is by the street at our main farm, or we could buy buffalo milk, don't do it, from the farmer's warehouse. If we choose to sell buffalo milk, it's going to have an average price per thousand liters of $6,723, or an average high price, again on easy economy, of $8,095. We could also make buffalo mozzarella. That's going to have an average low selling price of $20,250 or an average high price of $24,300 per thousand liters. Again, on easy economy. And again, it's going to be able to be bought at the farmer's market, Goldcrest Valley train sale point, the small farmer's kiosk by the road, or the restaurant. Buffalo milk can also be used to manufacture standard butter. And that is going to be able to be sold at the bakery. Farmer's Market, Goldcrest Valley Train Cell Point, Restaurant, or Small Farmer's Kiosk, 
and standard butter is going to have a low average price of 3024 or an average high price of 3638 on easy if we look at our production chains you can see that our dairy is going to accept buffalo milk and it's going to either make bottled buffalo milk buffalo milk mozzarella or buffalo milk butter standard butter if you will the recipes are as follows for buffalo milk we're going to get 10 units of buffalo milk and make 20 units of bottled milk so two for one so 1000 liters of buffalo milk go in 2000 liters of buffalo bottled milk come out the large dairy is going to do this at 144 cycles per month meanwhile the smaller dairy is going to do it at 14.4 smaller dairy is always going to be one tenth the production speed of the larger unit buffalo mozzarella is going to take three units of buffalo milk and make two units of buffalo mozzarella at a production cycle of 480 cycles per month for the big dairy or 48 cycles per month for the small dairy and our butter production is going to take three units of buffalo milk and make 45 units of butter and it's going to do that at 52.8 cycles per month for our big dairy and we'll do the math folks that means it's going to be 5.28 cycles per month for the small dairy as far as our buffalo productions go well we have here a pallet of buffalo milk thousand liters we're also going to get a thousand liter pallet of buffalo mozzarella right there that's what those look like with respect to our slurry and manure well we're actually going to be able to take slurry and manure and sell it over at the bga so here we have our manure it is going to be available for sale again at the biogas plant for $99 per thousand liters, a low price of 87, a high price of average 111. Or we could sell our slurry over at the BGA. Low price of $87, once again, a high average price of $111. Or as I mentioned, we could apply those two products to our field. What is the biogas plant going to generate? Well, the biogas plant has the capability of taking our manure or slurry and processing that into electric energy, methane, and digestate. Digestate can then be used as fertilizer on our fields. Hmm, isn't that interesting? So we can take, for example, 2,020 units of slurry, and we can get 1,818 units of digestate just a little bit of a reduction in the amount of digestate that we have available as opposed to the slurry we put in but we do get a fair bit of money from electric charge and the sale of methane that we can then take and put that digestate on our fields like fertilizer and then make use of it that way the same holds with respect to our manure 2020 units of manure is going to make 1818 units of digestate again down at the bga but in order to do that, you will have to have purchased the BGA or if you have enough money in build mode, you come here to factories and place your own biogas plant down. I no longer have a place to put this. Poor planning on my part. So that's still going to be a fairly significant investment at $435,000. So guys, that's going to wrap things up. I think we pretty much covered everything there is to know and deal with with respect to Buffalo here on Farming Simulator 25. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If there's anything I missed, let me know also. That would be extremely helpful. Uh, keep looking for more videos in this series. We're going to be covering all of the animals in independent videos. And also, as I mentioned, we're going to be covering... TMR in its own separate video as well because while well, there are several intricacies with respect to TMR like what goes in it how much goes in it the recipes different sizes of bales to use loose to use bales etc until next time happy farming